Yo, Hannah. Yo, Hannah. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a tutorial on a no sew journal, so a nice big chunky journal, and it doesn't require any kind of sewing or stapling or anything to put together. So super easy. And all you're going to need is some exercise books or some composition books. I used seven and they cost me 40 cents each. You're also going to need some PVA glue, some tape and some additional cardboard. And all we're going to do is take our stack of exercise books and we're going to stick them together basically. So I'm using my PVA glue and I'm gluing the books to each other by the covers. So these exercise books that I got did have a little bit of a glossy finish to the cover which makes it a little bit harder to adhere them because they're not porous so they don't stick as well. They're a little bit more slippery but they do glue together. You just have to give them a little bit more time to set. So I did two at a time and I just stuck them together as best I could by matching them up and trying to get them to sit really neatly on top of each other. So I just pieced two together at a time and then once I finished doing that I stuck all of them together. So like I said I did do seven exercise books but you can do any number that you like. It depends how thick you want your journal to be. So I did lots of two and then I had one left over and I really like the thickness that it gave me in the end. So you want to make sure that the glue is spread evenly over the covers but you also want to make sure that you're not pulling the glue towards the outer edges because if you do that and you have excess glue that sort of drips off the edges it can get stuck to the edges of the paper pages which can make them stick together around the outsides and it just makes it a little bit trickier later when you want to separate those pages so if you have that extra glue it might make it a little bit more messy so just try not to have big pools of glue sitting around those edges. So once I did that, I just made sure everything was sitting as neatly as I could get it to sit just by pushing those all the edges of the books in and pressing them up against my desk to make sure they were sitting together as flush as I could get them, which was a little bit tricky. But once I was happy with how they looked, I just put a heavy book on top and I just left them for a little while so that they could sort of start to dry. They weren't 100% dry, but just so they became a little bit tacky and so they weren't going to slip off when you move on to the next step, which is to take your tape and to apply tape as close as you can to the spine of the book. And what you're going to do is you're going to go through to each set of covers that you've glued together and you're going to wrap that tape the whole way around and that's just going to help once again to secure those covers together as best as possible and we really want it to be super secure towards the spine of the book because this is where the entire book sort of holds together so we definitely don't want it to come apart in that area especially so go through and do that to all the covers and that will make your little stack really really secure you can add more tape than that if you want to like on the outer edges too i didn't because later on i'll probably go in and add some decorative paper and maybe wrap it around but that just makes it really stable so at least do that much Next, I took a pretty piece of fabric and this is, again, this is optional, but I think it makes it look so much nicer. So I just put some glue across the spine of the book and then I attached that strip over the top of that. And then I added more glue over the front of the book and also on the back and just tried to wrap it around as snugly as I could. And I'm only using a strip because I'm going to cover up the front and back cover differently. 
with something else later and I just wanted to cover over that spine so that it looked more finished and just a little bit prettier. And I did leave myself a little bit of extra fabric so that I would have a bit of wiggle room while I was gluing this on and once it was dry I just trimmed off that extra little bit that was hanging off the edge. Now you want to take that extra cardboard. I'm using this oat, empty oat packet, and I'm just trimming down the cardboard so that I can make the front and back cover of this book more sturdy. So those exercise book covers are just a thin cardboard and adding an extra piece of cardboard on top makes them feel a lot more sturdy. So I was really lucky that when I trimmed that box down it actually fit really perfectly on top of my exercise book but you can just measure whatever you have and make sure it sits nice and flush over the front and back covers and then I just use that PVA glue again to glue that straight down on top and don't worry that the cardboard itself isn't very pretty unless you want your journal to look like an oats packet you can leave it like this but I'm going to decorate that later and cover over the top of that packaging. I'm also taking my bone folder, which is just a handy little tool to make sure everything's stuck down really well, but you don't have to have a bone folder to do this. Just make sure that it's stuck down as best as you can get it. And now I'm going to start covering up that packaging. So I have this craft paper roll. This is like a, um, you can use it to wrap presents. It's quite a thin paper, but that's what I'm going to use to hide that packaging. And so I'm just going to glue that over the top like you see me doing. And with the bit that is overhanging, I just flipped the book over and then trimmed it down so that it's more manageable. And then I cut off the corners just like you would if you were covering like a school book and then I'm just going to glue those little flaps over the cover. And again, I'm just using that PVA glue for everything that I'm gluing in this tutorial. And this paper is quite thin, so you will get a little bit of bubbling, but that's okay because it's gonna get covered up later as well. And I'm just running my hands, like sort of pinching my fingers around the edges of the cover as well, just to make sure that it's not got any little air bubbles. And then just flip it over and repeat for the back cover. And there you can see it's starting to look like a pretty little book. Because that paper was so thin, I wasn't very happy with the finish of the craft paper. So I decided to take some paint and paint over the top of that. And because I really like the way the spine turned out, I don't want to paint over that. So I'm taking some tape to, to cover over that to protect it. And that's going to give me a really nice neat edge so that I can paint all the way over to the edge of the craft paper but it's not going to get onto that fabric at all and it's just going to make a really nice crisp line.
So I just painted over the back and the front cover. I did the front and then I let it dry and then I flipped it over and did the back. And you can see when I take the tape away, you've got that really nice neat line and I really like how that turned out. Now you can decorate the cover and all of the decoration I've done you can do completely differently to what I've done. This is just the way that I did it and I really like how it turned out. I took these printables from my Etsy shop. These linen printables are from pack 17 in case you're wondering. So I printed those out on some light cardstock and cut them out and then I'm just choosing which one I want to go on the cover. So I really liked this white one with the little flowers in like sort of a wreath. And so I just glued that straight down on top of the cover as well. Once that was glued down, I took some varnish just to protect everything that I'd done so far. Now I'm going to go inside the book and I'm going to just make it look a little bit neater. So I'm going to cover up over that tape that I used earlier. You can skip this step by using a decorative tape in the first place. You could use like a decorative gaffer tape or something like that. I didn't have any. I only had this packaging tape. So I decided to go back in with this decorative washi tape. This washi tape is from Washi Wednesday. I really love this washi tape. I use it all the time and it happened to be the perfect width to cover over the tape that I did before. So before it was more of a sort of structural tape and now this time it's more of a decorative tape. And so I initially just covered over the strip itself, but then I decided that it looked better if I took an additional piece of tape and I sort of laid it down the seam of the page so that it covered a little bit onto the note paper. So I did that to every single place where there were covers that joined together. So every single place that had that tape that we did earlier. And it's not perfect, but later on I can go in and I can cover up any of those imperfections. Now I'm also taking some decorative tape and doing the same sort of thing in both the front and back inner cover. So just over that sort of seam where the cover meets the paper, just to make it look a bit neater. And now the last thing to do is just to cover the inner cover as well. And we want to make it look a lot prettier. So I just took some scrapbook paper and I trimmed it down to fit and then I just glued it down straight on top. And I didn't glue it over the top of the washi tape. I wanted that pattern tape to show through. So I just had the scrapbook paper meet where the tape ended. If you don't have scrapbook paper, you can use any sort of paper that you have. And there you have the finished book. 
So I was able to create this journal in just a couple of hours and I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it's so pretty and so usable. You could take school books and make all your subjects sort of stuck together into one book or you could just use it to write notes, which is what I'm going to do. A lot of the time when I have sort of messy notes that I want to write, I'll just write in an exercise book, but this just makes it that little bit prettier and a little bit more fun to use. So if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below. If you have any questions, you can also leave them in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.